Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use SPSS to conduct a stepwise regression. At this point, just some introductory words, if I say stepwise regression, what I do not mean is something like a 2SLS or 3SLS. In this case, stepwise means that we are going to automatize the idea of introducing one variable after another into our model and then getting some additional information out of all of this. So well, let's start with a reference case. In a reference case, I'm just going to conduct a normal linear regression. So I go to re uh, analyze regression linear. And in this example, I'm going to try to explain the weight of a person by the gender, their height, and also whether they are a smoker and left-handed. If I click on OK, I get the expected result, my full model with all four variables included at once. If I look closely, what I can see here, gender has the largest standardized coefficient, so the most important variable, height, the second largest, and then smoker left-handed, the least important variables, who also are insignificant. With this in mind, we can return to our regression analysis and take a look how we can actually make SPSS select the variables which are only important, which actually provide some additional benefit to our model as a whole. Well, how to do this? Well, we go to linear, and then instead of using the method enter, we're going to use the method stepwise. So at this point, he will step by step insert each of these variables into the model, starting with the most important, then the second, third, fourth important. And he will stop as soon as one of the variables does no longer provide any additional benefit for the explanatory power of our model. To see how this actually proceeds, I'm going to additionally select up here with statistics the part R squared change. What this actually does, we're going to see in the results in a moment. So I'm clicking on continue, on OK, and I get my results. In the results, I already see I have two models. And if I scroll down to the coefficients, what I can see is model one contains only the gender variable highly significant. Model 2 contains gender and height, also both highly significant. In the last part, we have the excluded variables, and we see smoker and left-handed are excluded in both models. That's for the simple reason that in both parts they're highly insignificant. That's what we can see here in those parts. So what SPSS in this context did is Start with the most important variable, gender, then select the next one, but include this only if this is significant, if this actually provides additional benefits to the model. Well, how do I know that this is a significant additional benefit? That's why I activated up here the R squared changes. So just using gender gives us an R squared of 53.2. If I add height, I get an R squared of 59.4. So yeah, that's an increase, as we can see here, of 6.2 percentage points. Question, is this actually a significant increase? Well, that's what the last part of this table is for. This conducts an F-test whether this increase, or the respective change in the F-statistic, is a significant change. And that's what the test back here tells us. If this is smaller than 5%, then we can say that, yes, indeed, this is a significant change in the F-statistic, significant increase in the F-statistic. So the model has an increase, a significant increase in explanatory power. So in other words, this R-squared change is a significant increase. The model becomes significantly better. And what SPSS actually does in his selection, he adds variables as long as those variables actually provide 
additional significant explanatory power. So here we could imagine there being a model 3 and 4, but the R squared changes related to these models are not significant. So the addition of these variables does not increase our f values significantly, does not increase our R squared values significantly. Well, that was mostly the first part of what I want to talk about here today. The second part is that, well, at this point, we just let SPSS do whatever it wants. However, it has the big disadvantage that only one variable is added in each of the different steps. And only those variables are added who are actually highly significant. That might be a problem if, for example, I'm working with dummy variables. So I have a set of dummy variables, let's say 16 dummy variables for different regions. And I want to add all 16 dummy variables at once or not at all. So if I would use this method, he would go, okay, which of the dummies is significant? I'm going to add these dummy variables, but I'm not going to add those dummy variables which are insignificant. That's something I do not want to have. I want to have either all dummies or none of the dummies. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. So I'm going back to analyze regression linear. I'm going to get rid of smoker and left-handed, but I still leave this at stepwise. I could also change this to enter because I know all two of them will be entered into the model. But so, this one thing I'm doing newly here is I'm going to click with the blocks on next and I see I got an additional block of variables. This block I'm going to add the clothing size and something like overall happiness. So I'm just adding additional variables here. If I were to work with a set of dummy variables, that's where, for example, I could put set one of dummy variables, could click on the next block, add second set of dummy variables. And well, I'm going to leave this at enter. So if I'm leaving this at enter for this block, first block is still stepwise, second block is enter. This enter means he uses this whole block as one unit. So either include this whole block or leave the whole block out of it. So use all dummies or use none of them. Okay, what would the result look like? Let's take a look here. Well, we see we have three models now. The first model, gender. The second model, gender and height. And the third model, gender, height and both of the variables, clothing, size and happiness. And that's even though we see here, happiness is insignificant. But he treats this block consisting of clothing, size and happiness as one single unit. So either the whole block or no block at all. Well, let's have a look up here. We see including this block with happiness and clothing size increases, R squared, increase it by 14.5%. This is a significant increase as well. Well, we might conjecture that this increase is mainly due to the clothing size, not due to happiness, but this doesn't matter because it's about the whole block. And in this case, the whole block actually has a significant increase, leads to a significant increase. That's more or less everything I wanted to talk about here. Just want to give you one final comment. If you work in this way, you could get an effect as we see here in this third model. If we include the block clothing size and happiness, our variable height becomes insignificant. One of those reasons being that clothing size and height are actually related, so we have a problem of multicollinearity here. That's a different story. But in either case, height is included, but the third part is also included, and he does not go back on his decision to include the height variable. That might actually be a problem so I would rarely do things like the ones I did here, combine the stepwise and the enter methods. 
This was just for illustrative purposes. Usually I would go use first the stepwise version, find out which are actually the relevant variables and then go and work through the different locks of my model. For example, for dummy variables or certain other aspects. For example, set of control variables. Well, as I said, that's about it about this unit. So I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.